Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink, it's time for some part of XL discussion. Today I wanted to go through my picks for some of the best items to double corrupt in patch 3.18. This is very much tied to the Sentinel League economy. If you're watching this in a different league, then some of these items may still be relevant, but some of them may not be anymore. And there might be some new things that are worth checking out as well. If you want to download the presentation I've got here for some notes, you can definitely do that from down in the description below. There'll be a link to my blog where you can download this. So firstly, a quick recap of the Corruption Chamber mechanics. You'll need to spawn this by using a number of Elva missions in order to create a Temple of Atsuadal. This needs to have a Locus of Corruption in it, which is a Tier 3 version of the Corruption Chamber. You're not always going to be able to do this every time that you start an Elva Temple, but you will get them occasionally. The Corruption Chamber, when used on an item, has a 25% chance to just outright destroy the item. Nothing's left, no brick version, it's just completely gone. There is a 25% chance to re-roll the item as a rare item, and this will have a random influence type and four to six random mods, three to four if the item is a jewel or otherwise is capped at four mods. It'll have a 25% chance to bleach all sockets on the item white, and it will have a 25% chance to double corrupt the item, which means that up to two random non-Vile Implicits are removed from the item, and then two random Vile Implicits are added to the item. There is also a very special and unique outcome that occurs if you use a sacrificial garb that is scoured. So when you double corrupt a sacrificial garb and you actually roll that it's going to double corrupt the item, you will find that the item is transformed into the unique chess piece Shadow Stitch, which cannot be obtained through any other means and is reasonably good. This is something always to keep in mind if you're playing in solo self-found. Get yourself your sacrificial garb either by killing Atsuri in the Apex of Sacrifice or in the Alluring Abyss or in the Temple of Atsuadal. They aren't all that rare. So the first item I want to suggest is something that is very popular in Trade League to Double Corrupt, and that is the chess piece Incandescent Heart. This is a tier 3 drop anyway unique item. Now this is overwhelmingly used on Phantasmal Cremation builds, and it is probably best in slot armor on those builds. The mods you want to get on this before Double Corrupting, you definitely want your 20 quality because you can't get that afterwards in League, you can in Standard by the use of Tainted Armorer's Scraps. You also want at least 18%, but ideally a full 20% on the gain X% percent of elemental damage as added extra chaos damage. The premium corruptions you're chasing are anything that will add gem levels to Phantasmal Cremation. Plus 2 AoE, plus 2 Duration, plus 2 Projectile, or plus 1 Universal All Socketed Gems. If you do hit that Universal All Socketed Gems, then the person that owns this Incandescent Heart, whether that be you in the end or whether you trade it off to someone else, they will probably use this in conjunction with Empower Support, or if they've got a lot of currency behind them, maybe even Awakened Empower support. Now what's your chance of getting two of these premium corruptions? It's about 1% per corruption chamber used. One question that needs to be asked is, should you link your Incandescent Heart before or after corruption? The cost to link before corruption is about 200 Jewel Orbs and about 1,000 Fusings, based upon sample sizes of about 100,000 Fusings being used. It's about 1 in 1,000 on a 20 quality item to 6 link the item. Cost to link after corruption is 1850 Vile Orbs, 350 Jewel Orbs, and 1500 Fusings. This is at current market values about seven times as expensive as doing it beforehand. Now my suggestion is that if the item is still valuable while six linked and with white sockets, then you should link first. Otherwise, corrupt first, then only link the one in 30 or so that are god tier. For four link items, really who cares? Next item I want to suggest is Chevron's Wrapping, so it's another chess piece. Here, Chevron's Wrappings is a tier 2 rarity item that is a drop anywhere unique. It's used on a wide range of builds, mostly Fire Trap and Cold Damage Over Time builds this league, although that does tend to change. It's a very versatile armor that's used on a lot of different builds. The mods you want to get before corrupting it, you want to get 20 quality, a decent energy shield percentage roll, and base defenses, aka Sacred Orb roll. One thing you can do is try to pick up Chevron's Wrappings that are for trade, that have like 100, 101, 102, maybe even 120% increased energy shield roll, but that have a very good roll on the Sacred Orb, and then at that point apply Divine Orbs until you've got like 140% or better, and then at that point that is a good candidate to throw into the Krangle Box. Premium Corruptions you want to look for here are basically anything that increases gem levels. Maybe it won't work for you, but it will work for someone. Uh, less so with the Warcry one, but with most of the gem level options, it's pretty good to get them. The chance to hit perfectly on this is really hard to compute because there's so many good outcomes. And also people just want different combinations of corruptions. But Chevron's Wrappings does double corrupt pretty well. Okay, so next we're going to look at something that is a little bit more expensive. And this is the unique jewel melding of the flesh. 
This is a boss drop unique. It's not for every build or gear set, but it is the best jewel in the game that doesn't drop corrupted. The best corruptions to chase on this are immune to corrupting blood plus 2% increased mana reservation efficiency. Your chance to get both of them is 1 in 210 double corrupts, aka 1 in 840 corruption chambers. You probably won't see this. However, it's pretty good even if you only get one of them. Your chance to get exactly one of these is 4 in 21 double corrupts or 1 in 21 corruption chambers. One thing I will add is you should probably never vile this item, always double corrupt instead. This applies for other high value jewels as well, you'll just generally get better results out of them. There's a number of really interesting ring corrupted implicits, things that increase the effectiveness of specific auras on you. These are really worthwhile if you can get them, and Call of the Void is a pretty cheap item that is very good on certain builds. It's a boss drop unique from Uber Elder. Not to be confused with Uber Duba Elder, this is just the normal Uber Elder fight that's been in the game since patch 3.2. Ring Corruptions are really good, and this is a build around item with a lot of power. You also want to probably consider Call's friend Winterweave, and you might actually double corrupt Winterweave as well, although you need to be aware of the interaction between the two of them. If you have a 25% chill on you, you get a 25% increased action speed boost, but you also get minus 12.5% damage from the way that Winterweave interacts with Call of the Void. After all, in Path of Exile, you are your own worst enemy, and so therefore enemies chilled by your hits are less than their damage in dealt by half of chill effect, actually does apply to you when you're under reverse chill that you've self-inflicted. Continuing on the theme of rings with a Call of the X name, Call of the Brotherhood comes up next. This has been a perennial favourite for double corruption. It's a tier 2 rarity, drop anywhere unique. Make sure that you catalyse that 40% lightning conversion up to 48% first. The other mods on this item are just bonuses, but that one is absolutely essential. Dream Corruptions to get on this item, most aura effects are great, as is Bleed Immunity. Rare Gloves are going to be next. Gloves have amazing corruptions. They're in this sort of weird spot. Now, I've deliberately got a set of gloves to showcase here that has two solid corruptions, Temp Chains on hit, Vulnerability on hit, but that has terrible other mods on it. And that's because there's been a couple of changes with patch 3.18 on Recombinators that allow you to potentially try to transfer special mods onto a base like that using Recombinators. This is risky, you can definitely lose all of your inputs doing this, but it's something that's worth keeping in mind. One thing that's important to remember though, is that gloves, while I have amazing corruptions, these corruptions do compete with amazing Eldritch influence implicits. Double corrupting rares is very viable. I don't recommend any uniques in the glove slot, just because so few of them get used. Rare gloves are so strong currently in Path of Exile, that really the only gloves that get used are either Hands of the High Templar, which are a very special case with how they interact with corruption, and they sort of are a rare item just in disguise, and also Gravebind, which is something that's just not used all that much. Next is Legacy of Fury. Now this is going to be my number one overall pick. This is a Maven exclusive drop and very, very common. This set of boots is best in slot on Righteous Fire Inquisitor builds, which are the most popular builds of patch 3.18. The chance to inflict the Burn Cascade mod and the Scorch Effect mods are both very important on this item. Ideally, they will add up to 84% or more. Perfect is 90%. So you can get 40% on the Burn Cascade chance and 50% on the Scorch Effect. You can chase the boot enchant you want later. This is by the use of a Tainted Blessing, which is one of those things from Scourge that people aren't, often aren't aware went core. These drop in the Labyrinth and they're something that allow you to apply the Labyrinth's Divine Font onto a Corrupted item. So if you do get a Legacy of Fury and double corrupt it with amazing corruptions, then you can just go and run lab yourself after trading for a couple of Tainted Blessings. And eventually you can get that regenerate X percent of life per second after you've been hit, or one of the other enchants that might work better for your build. The top corruptions to chase here, move speed, life percent, most plus gem levels are actually surprisingly good because Righteous Fire builds are quite versatile in what they can put where, and so they can swap around pieces of gear in their gear set so that they can take a lot of advantage of that. Spell suppression is actually useful because the numbers on it are pretty good. Even though you're not going to get 100% spell suppression on a Righteous Fire build, that's okay. 9% spell suppression is still a useful defensive layer. Obviously 100% is a lot better, but 9% is still okay. And you can also get an extra maximum endurance charge. I do argue that this is probably the best overall use of Elvis Cranglebox this league. Okay, next we've got Crystallized Omniscience for those of you that have hundreds of exalts to throw around chasing perfection. One very important point with this is that you need to at attribute catalyze this first and bless it so that it's 19 to all attributes. So 16 base, blessed up to 19. 
If you do succeed in double corrupting it, then you will lose that 19 to all attributes. But the fact that you have applied the catalyst means that if you get the perfect outcome, which is two, four to six percent increases to an attribute, then they will be scaled up. If you roll 4%, that's not going to scale up to 4.8. It's going to round down to 4. But if you roll 5 or 6%, which is going to happen more often, then you will get an extra plus 1% out of that. And that is really good. Also, you want to divine the attributes requirement line to be at least 23% or better. But really, just go for 25%. You can afford crystallized omniscience. You can afford 11 average divine orbs as well. And finally, we have replica soul tether. Uh, belt corruptions are good. Cloth belt base implicit is less so. Make sure that this is a 6% roll and catalyze it up to 7% first. Once you've done that, uh, Replica Soul Tether is something that has a lot of room to improve with the Krangle Box, and it's not all that expensive an item to lose anymore. Very expensive early in the league, but it does tend to come down. It's often 8 or 9 exalts on day 1 of a league, 5 exalts week 1, and then just 1 or 2 exalts later in the league as people start running more and more heist. Anyway, that's my list of recommended items to throw in Alva's Double Corruption Chamber. If you've got any other suggestions, definitely fire away below. And definitely don't underestimate the potential of influenced rare gloves. They have a lot of potential in the Krangle Box and you can do some pretty great things with them. May your Valorbs have interesting results and may you get some good Double Corruptions this league.